Hey guys, welcome back. So we are continuing with more Symbiosis Necrosis, where now God Carnage needs to make his way back to Flash Thompson and tie up some loose ends. That is assuming that Carnage is actually done with Flash, because you know with God Carnage, there's always a twist around the corner. So with that said, if you're enjoying these videos, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and don't forget to hit that bell up top to get all notifications so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so coming back, the first thing we do is pick up with Flash Thompson, who's been trapped in the Dark Force dimension by God Carnage for some time now. And like we saw, it was around this time when God Carnage first found out from Flash's memories that Dylan's currently bonded with the Venom symbiote, which is what sent Carnage after Dylan from here, and we pretty much know how that went. But now when we come back to Flash, it's here where we see the effects of the Dark Force Dimension taking their toll on them. Because with the exception of those who channeled the Dark Force, people like Cloak, Spot, and now Carnage, though in the case of Spot, though he did use the Spotted Dimension, he obtained his powers from the Dark Force, which is how Carnage got access to this place to begin with, when he took Jonathan Owen's powers and his life. But in the case of Flash Thompson, who's trapped here, we quickly find that he succumbed to the effects of the Dark Force energy. It surrounded him completely, he's breathing it in, it's tearing him up from the inside, and it's caused him to slip into a lethargic state. And because of this, he's sent through what appears to be a number of dreams, which are instead him reliving some of his worst memories. From his childhood, from his time in the army, he's reliving and feeling everything all over again. But throughout this cycle, in the moments where he wakes up, he uses this time to siphon power from the Dark Force to prepare himself to face God Carnage when he returns. Which from here, this once again takes us back to Our Lady of Saints Church in the aftermath of Dylan's death. Cause this is eventually where God Carnage ended up after he locked Flash away. But this time when we come back, for a moment here, we follow the abandoned Cletus Cassidy, who now without the Carnage symbiote, he finds himself here just melting away while at the same time just utterly confused because he doesn't know why God Carnage left him or where he went, at least not yet. And it's not long before he discovers what happened because as it turns out, just after Dylan died, God Carnage saw Dylan travel to the unbeyond, to the eventuality. And we're reminded at this time how the Venom symbiote looked after Dylan's body, keeping his heart pumping in hopes of Dylan eventually returning, which we saw prior to this with the story jumping to different perspectives throughout this one event. And that's why for a moment here, we jump over to Cletus because just after his moment of confusion, his eyes open and he sees what Carnage sees. Because before, when Carnage mentioned that he was compelled and tempted to respond to the call of water, at the time, Cletus could feel this just like the Carnage symbiote did. But it wasn't until moments later where Cletus would see that the Carnage symbiote left him to first follow Dylan, which is how Carnage initially saw the eventuality to where from there he went through Meridius and into the garden at the end of time. And in just a matter of seconds, the memories of everything we saw Carnage do in the garden, Cletus sees all of it and he feels what Carnage feels as well. The excitement, the moment of triumph, everything. But we find out just seconds later when God Carnage comes back, something's changed between them. Cause when Carnage returns, he tells Cletus, I found Eddie, he was hiding in time. And Cletus tells him, I know, I saw the carnage. You destroyed the garden without me. So God Carnage is like, don't be angry, Cletus. I brought you a treat. I brought them all back to here, to now, to you. And it's one of those things where this now allows Cletus to see the other symbiotes in the war that's coming. And as the carnage symbiote bonds back with them, they more or less get back on the same page. But going forward, even though they're back together, Cletus can't help but to remember the pain he felt from this moment. And following this, we head over to Roxmart to do a brief check-in on Travis Brookfields, who's the influencer we were introduced to earlier in the series that's been following and reporting on the Carnage conspiracy. But for a moment here while he's at work, at Roxmart, in the electronics department, we see him eventually go off on this lady who brought her computer in to get fixed. And it's one of those things where she's like, well, I run my whole life on this computer. But at the same time, she doesn't understand the concept of backing things up to the cloud. So Travis snaps, and I kind of don't blame him, because he just tells her, how do you have your whole life on this machine? And you don't know anything about how any of it works. And I mean, at least know how to back up your important files, which again, I don't blame him for feeling that way, because I used to work at Micro Center and I've seen plenty of it. But with him going off more or less, which, you know, that part was uncalled for, this gets him pulled away. 
So he goes on his phone to watch some videos online where again, he's just obsessed with everything connected to Carnage. And it's here where he gets the news about the deceased John Statler Baker. And it leads him to believe that someone else is gonna die. So right after this, when we go back to Cassidy and Carnage at Our Lady of Saints Church, as they're getting ready to leave, they hear scratching noises inside of a storage closet. So they go to check it out, only to find the lady inside there hiding and praying. So Cassidy asks what she's praying for. And she tells him, forgiveness. So he's like, for what? Did you do something bad? And she's like, yes, I hid while you killed them all. So Cletus just tells her like, I mean, you weren't gonna stop me. What are you gonna do? I mean, she's just like, oh, I could have done something. And it's kind of crazy because he asked her here, do you want to die? And she tells him no, but I didn't think I'd be so scared to die. I have no regrets. I do as much as I can. I volunteer, I forgive, I'm ready to face God. And after hearing this, Cletus just leaves her there while telling her your life sounds teeth grindingly boring. Do some drugs, have an orgasm or 10. Make yourself a life worth taking. And with seeing this, I can't help but to think, like if I was in that church playing dead, I would have gave myself up right there. I would have bust out laughing, I'm sorry. And then Carnage would have turned around and got me. But from here, after leaving the church, Cletus sees this guy across the street in the alley, taking a piss. So he walks towards him, giving him an evil stare. And the dude just looks over his shoulder like, the hell are you looking at? At least wait till I get three shakes. <laughs> now nah, I'm playing, he ain't say all that. But following this, Cletus says, a drunk man emptying his bladder on a street corner, like a dog. Are you a dog? So the dude starts yelling at him, and Cletus is like, you bark like a dog. So, old boy just swings on him. Which, of course, this isn't doing much of any phasing Cassidy. But as this is happening, he gives this guy the opportunity to stop and walk away. And he tells him if he doesn't, then he's gonna put him down like a dog. So needless to say, this guy, he doesn't stop. So Cassidy kills him, only to then hang him up in front of Our Lady of Saints Church, pointing at the front door with a message carved into his stomach saying he had a choice. And it's described to us alongside of us like there's this window of time where there's hope until it closes and there's not. And following this, we then go back to Flash Thompson who, like we saw earlier, he's reliving some of the worst moments of his life. Whether it was the abuse from his father, getting shot when he was in the army, many of these moments where he barely made it out alive. And if not that, he's fighting like his life is on the line, which in a lot of ways is very similar to what he's doing now, as he's trying to hold out in the dark force dimension until Carnage gets back. But as we go to the next memory, which at this point takes us to Midtown High School, where at the time, Flash was very much a bully, as was shown here with Peter stopping him from beating up this other kid. But in the middle of this memory, Flash feels himself being pulled out from his containment, cause now, Carnage is back. And it presents the moment that Flash has been waiting for and preparing for this whole time. So now, at this moment, it's described to us to be much like a number of the other moments that we were given a glimpse of just now from Flash's past, where either he was nearly about to die, or he was fighting like his life was on the line. And it's kind of like, man, imagine getting attacked by a bully who's fighting you like their life's on the line. <laughs> like, that's just crazy. But either way, as Carnage approaches, Flash concentrates all of the dark force energy that he absorbed to use it against Carnage. Because as Anti-Venom, when Flash heals someone, much like what we saw when he healed his mother in issue four, Flash absorbs whatever that infection, or in her case, radiation, is to himself. So now with him absorbing the dark force for so long, he's able to compact it all up into one place just so he can unleash all of that power on Carnage. And again, we're told this whole escape plan in itself. It's a combination of super risky and Flash fighting for his life, which again, going back to the memories we saw, this moment's a little bit of everything wrapped up into one. And as we're shown, it's able to get Carnage off of him while also sending Flash through the portal that Carnage made to get here. And so now real quick, I want to give a special shout out to all the patrons. Thank you guys for all of your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below where you can go to patreon.com slash dope spill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and we'll do it again on the next one. All right, later.